Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching uh, Nile Cruise on Nile TV. And from a very special place here in Egypt, we bring you today's episode of uh, Nile Cruise. National Museum of Egyptian Civilization, the Nemec, is the first museum of its type in the Arab world, it's devoted entirely to highlight the Egyptian civilization from prehistory to the present day. The museum is located within the archaeological site, El Fostot, first Islamic capital, overlooking Ain Sira Springs. The museum aims to frame the Egyptian tangible and intangible heritage, showing the influence of Egyptians on the, their land through history. The institution is built as an educational and research center to preserve and also to publish information regarding the Egyptian civilization. And to shed more light, dear viewers, on the significance of the multi-purpose entity, we are delighted to host uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed Ghanim, the CEO of the NAMIC. Of course, it's a pleasure to have you with us today in today's Good episode time, of uh, Nile Cruise, sir. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, sir. And let's start with the uh, difference between a civilization museum and archaeological museum. Well, actually, uh, a museum is a museum. But the civilization museum is different from all the museums in Egypt. It's not uh, focusing on pharaonic era. And it's not focus focusing on a special theme, uh, let's say, Islamic or Coptic. Yet it takes across the board and cross-cutting the history since before uh, the history uh, till now. So passing by uh, pharaonic eras, uh, passing by uh, Roman era, uh, passing by Coptic Muslim era, all the eras. Uh, and it, it touches upon, as said in the introduction, the tangible and the intangible uh, kind of uh, heritage that we have in Egypt. So that's what's different and unique as a museum. Yet, I don't see it as a museum only. It's a more of a cultural hub, including at its core, the museum, which is, again, is different. So in that context, I would call it an entity that is unique all over the world, because uh, bringing in uh, different types of uh, heritage and different types of culture uh, to the museum, adding to that the entertainment edge makes it so unique in Egypt as well as the world. Um, sir, how does this museum highlight the richness and the diversity of Egyptian civilization? It explains to the visitor not only uh, uh, how uh, civilization um, evolved and developed over time, but it has elements of showing uh, how Egyptians were unique in different types of arts and activities. So among the pieces that we have here is a skeleton of a person going back 3,500 years before history. We have um, a special, act I mean, set related to engineering and architecture. We have a special set of uh, medicine and how it was developed in Egypt. And taking us through the arts as well, uh, in terms of how wood art was created and how it was done in different eras so that you can compare, as well as jewelry and all the different stuff. So in that sense, it gives not only a piece and that's it, but it tells a story behind each piece or behind each set, how things were developed in different types of eras. So you said at the very beginning it's very important to know that this is not only a museum, but it's um, focusing mainly on culture and uh, education. So um, every artifact or every uh, thing that's being displayed here has its own story. So how, how do you make such a, a display for each piece that you have in here? Well, actually we're using the technology and uh, some of the, of the multimedia type of... Uh, uh, technology in order to explain to the visitors how things are um, exhibited in a way or another. So we have uh, different screens that are in the center of uh, the, the hall so that anybody can access it. And some for the unique and differentiated uh, pieces or sets 
they have a, a film or a movie showing the story behind it. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, it's a kind of interactive uh, learning process. Uh, the educational aspect is a little bit different because we have special activities for kids uh, where they see whatever uh, they visit in the in the in the in the mu in the museum itself, and then they can replicate some of the stuff, and see how they were done by themselves. Uh, and then we have the research element, where we have uh, one of the most distinguished labs in the world. I would say in the world because some of the of the pieces that we have in the labs are only available in the Louvre uh, uh, museums in in Paris and uh, Abu Dhabi. And uh, so in that sense, we're very distinguished, whether on the, on the research level, and adding to that, we have a team of people working only on research. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, you're combining the idea of a, a hub, whether it's, it's educational uh, for visitors or for the workers in, in the museums. Okay, um, sir, what is the significance of presenting and displaying this civilization to both the Egyptian citizens and the foreign visitors, which is our target, of course, because tourism is one of the main, of course, uh, um, um, main issues when it comes to uh, our economic stability here in Egypt. Well. And we need to work on tourism. Uh, now, the idea is, um, uh, foreigners, who, when, when they come to Cairo, then they will have more than one attraction. So that is the main idea, is that when they come, they don't only, as you used to be in the past, they go to the, only to the Tahrir Museum downtown, as well as the pyramids, and that's it. The idea is to create other uh, places, attracting places for them. So now you have the Grand Museum, which is opening, and then to be distinguished from the Grand Museum, um, then you have the mummies here. And the idea, again, is not only the mummies, it's how you show the mummies, what's the story behind the mummies, how they are exhibited. And, it, and, and, and the scene that you come in the grave and see the tombs and see the coffins and, and things like that. So in that sense, it is distinguished. But adding to that for the question on Egyptians, a lot of the Egyptians, we have to admit that we visit the museum only when we were in school. And then you stop unless you have a visitor coming from abroad, then you take him to the, to the Tahrir Museum. Now, the idea is to bring back the cultural aspect to the Egyptian family. Most of us, uh, during the weekend, have nothing to do except going to a mall or to the club. And in that, that sense, you get bored after a while, and then you spend a lot of money. Now we're creating this uh, venue where you can enjoy your day, adding to your culture, adding to your mind and at the same time having some kind of entertainment uh, by dining, by, by having lunch, by whatever uh, different activities you have for you and the kids. Sir, um, uh, this place comprises a theater and it also comprises a cinema. Yes. And uh, you have the restaurants, so you yes. have everything in this place that uh, makes uh, the facilis facilitates the um, concept of children coming and knowing more about their country tourists coming and knowing more about Egypt, uh, um, how were you able to um, uh, make this uh, a whole idea uh, with this vision? Um, well, actually, I don't, I don't give the credit to myself. This vision was created. The CEO, this at the end of the day, we had this, the this vision was created a long while ago. And uh, uh, in fact, but it's a wonderful vision. It's it's a, it's a, it's an excellent vision, and it's very unique. And that's why it's 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 unique, but it's difficult to to manage. Exactly. Uh, and and in that sense, we have to admit that you cannot run all this place uh, alone. And we have to subcontract to the private sector to take place of where I'm an economist. So building on the comparative advantage, they are more able on managing. Uh, whenever it comes to money and commercial aspects, then they're able to, to manage it better than us. So that's the idea, is that you bring in a public-private kind of partnership with the vision of entertaining both the visitor, whether he is or she is Egyptian or non-Egyptian, and create a new hub where actually I believe it's, it's that the Egyptians are thirsty for having such kind of a place taking into account the different social standards and the different types of uh, Egyptians and what they like and what they don't like. 
all this is, is, is taken into account when it comes to this place. Sir, of course, the important event that's going to take place um, soon. at the uh, soon, Inshallah. of course, the uh, uh, receiving the uh, royal uh, mummies here in, in, in the Nemex. Um, what's your plan uh, and your preparations for this day? Um, what is your propaganda for, of course, this day? And um, how many visitors you're expected to receive also? Um, when it comes to the plan, uh, I would say leave it as a surprise, as you all of you have seen the buzz happening on the social media regarding uh, uh, the, the parade that's going to take place of the mummies, and that's handled by uh, an Egyptian firm, and um, it's going to be the first of its kind in Egypt, where you have a, a real parade with the mummies. Uh, it's, it's handled by the Egyptian firm, but it is in, done in coordination with the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, as well as other uh, ministers involved in the parade itself. So you're talking here about Cairo Governorate, Giza Governorate, and so on and so forth. They are all involved, the Ministry of Interior, they are all involved with. But it's a matter of coordination between the Ministry of uh, Tourism and Interior, uh, Tourism and Antiquities, and the company, which is dealing with the old procedures that you, all, you see all over uh, the place from Tahrir Museum till here. What I can say about it is going to be a huge surprise. Uh, I would say something towards, uh, I hope, inshallah, towards the end of this year that, uh, that will bring some kind of joy with such kind of a stressful year. Um, and then uh, how it's going to be handled, we're expecting uh, that the opening will be at the very top level of the country. Uh, and uh, adding to that, the number of visitors that we, we, we do expect, you mean, after we open, Nobody can predict the exact number with COVID-19 affecting the, the whole uh, world, not only us. So actually, all the business models, all the business plans that were uh, put in place Plan. on how you predict are, are not in line with what do we expect. I cannot expect anything with such a situation. Yeah. Okay, um, um, and the museum is divided into six galleries. What are they? And why is it divided into these six galleries with six different themes? That was the plan at the beginning. At, at this stage, there are not six. There are six that are not still open. What we have uh, at the moment, it is the main uh, core uh, hall, which is going to display a lot of uh, what I've said before, so I won't repeat again the idea from before history up to now. And then you have the mummies. Uh, gallery or hall where the mom is it's, it's a special hall where you go in it and you feel the, the, the atmosphere of being in a grave as as uh, as we explained and then we have a third hall it's called the temporary hall and the idea of a temporary hall or a temporary gallery is that um, the exhibition remains only for six months or whatever and it is uh, renewed but we're going to host uh, the textiles um, uh, museum which is going to be displayed in it and finally, the fourth hall, which is going to be opened soon, but not now, is what we call the capital. The ca it's called the capital hall, where you go up, and it depends mainly uh, about 22 floor, but you see all over Egypt, and then you use the multimedia to explain the parts. So you see the pyramids, and you see a history on the multimedia of what is the pyramids, and so on. You go to, the, to Salah al-Din castle, and you see things like that. So in that sense, again, it's bringing in the technology, top-notch technology to mingle with how we can display our culture. Uh, sir, you've mentioned that um, uh, people used to come to the museum when they are in school or uh, when they are in university. But here in this museum, we have a ready-made section for children. So how do you encourage children to come and, and visit here uh, the museum? Now, we have to create a niche for children. And the whole learning process for children is, 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 is now being different from the past. Technology is involved, uh, practical aspects are involved, entertainment is involved, and that's what we are doing. We're making sure that the point of attraction that can attract a child, whether we're talking about a five, six years old child up to um, 14, 12, or whatever teenager, uh, he can or she can be attracted 
to what brings him in. And then you feed in the education that you want, but just by, by having the points of attraction, which is technology, practical uh, aspects, and entertainment. If you have those kind of joy for a child, then definitely you can add education afterwards in, in the things you give him, you feed him. Okay, sir, we ca I, I, I didn't ask you. You said they were in six galleries. Yes. How many galleries are they? Till now, there are four. There are only four. There but are six. You intend to make them six? No. Really? There are four that will be opened. Six not opened in addition to the four. Oh, so they're going to be ten in total? Inshallah. Not necessarily. Hopefully, hopefully, not hopefully. necessarily. So yeah, far, we're talking. So, so, so far, we're talking about four. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you might not need the other six. Okay. So depending on how things go, and depending on the cost of transforming them into the, the four, uh, it, into transforming them into kind of displaying, because it costs so much, mm -hmm. then we will decide how the plans are going to be. How far will these serve as a, as a forum for open dialogue, uh, debate, and the exchange of ideas? Well, as, as we agreed that, if you agree with me... Of course, me, I can't have you here and not ask you such a question. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, the idea is that you have, as we said, most of the Egyptian families find the problem over the weekends. What to do? So what this place is, is offering is a new venue for entertainment, for education, for fun, Whatever that means, which means uh, enjoying good food with different type of cuisines, enjoying some kind of shopping, but related shopping, not, not the... the, the it, it's more of a traditional kind of shop. We have here a, a, a mall that consists of 40, 40 42 uh, bazaars. Uh, what kind of um, traditional stuff will be displayed is related to the idea of culture. So it's, it's going to be the archaeology, our archaeology, our, 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 our identity, the Egyptian identity. Our heritage. Our heritage. Our exactly. heritage. Whether you're talking about our textiles, uh, jewelry, uh, small. Uh, it's going to be all about the Nefertiti things. And not the, necessarily. Not necessarily. But it is I'm related. I'm giving an example. It's, it is related. I mean, all the stuff that has to do with. Uh, the Artica. Exactly. Uh, so in that sense, it's a venue that can attract people of different types, people getting bored of the normal malls that we see all over Egypt now, uh, people who are interested in joining fun with a bit of education, with a bit, uh, with a bit of uh, uh, food. So that's how the, the, the vision is set for this place. Even if I'm traveling abroad and I need to get uh, presents for uh, the um, foreigners that I'm going to visit, then I can just come here, pop in, exactly. buy from the bazaars, and go give them exactly. different different things, maybe different than th what we have in, in Hussein and in Moaz Street. So that it's going to be different exactly. concepts. And we're, which we're taking good care of the quality as well. Okay, that's so the So hopefully <laughs> they, they will be made and in what e about the prices? Made in Egypt, not made in China. What about prices? Uh, well, that depends on the market. I, I'm an economist, so I, d I will never ever interfere. But but what I can no, no, tell no, you no, about from your own perspective, from my own perspective, we're taking this into account by having reasonable rents. We're not skyrocketing rents, so this will be mm -hmm. factoring in the prices for the customer. Okay, sir. Um, uh, the museum here provides centers for the youth. How far Sorry, I didn't centers for the youth? Yes. How far these centers are important? Now again. Among the things that we've seen uh, and uh, part of the social corporate responsibility of this place is that um, people want to have a different kind of activities for youth. Whether we're talking about things related to um, um, drawing or, or, uh, or having fun with, with colors, whether we're talking about uh, some kind of cultural activities as traditional kind of dancing or, uh, or um, different kind of handicrafts. Among the things that we're having here is kind of uh, uh, cooperation with some of the universities where students will have some kind of their, uh, of their art displayed. 
whether we're talking about photographing or we're talking about painting or so 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 those are the type of ideas that brings in a kind of collaboration while taking into account uh, the, the surrounding area having in places we have a lot of artists around us here uh, we're bringing in them here in workshops in, in different type of events so that we create this hub as I mentioned at the beginning so so you're going out of the box you're not um, definitely you're not you're not you're not making it the traditional definitely. way that's wonderful sir and all respect of course Thank sir you. Uh, of course uh, we witnessed here in uh, dynamic uh, of course, uh, the glass uh, pyramid uh, hall. That's, That's the there. capital that I told you. Yeah. Uh -huh. We call it the capital hall. You call it? The capital hall. The capital hall. Okay. Qa'at al-Asima. Qa'at al-Asima. Qa'at al-Asima. What does it display, sir? It displays, uh, um, when you go up there, if you had yeah. the time to visit, you'll see all over Egypt. But adding to that, sir. what's new, you can go to the, to the Burg to see the, all over Egypt. Adding to that, it, it has a number of screens uh, where it has movies. And those movies tell you the story behind what you see. So that's what you see. Uh, behind what we see in, in, in all over Egypt, in entire Egypt, or um, no, places Sarah, like, uh, the, the, like, like the Baron Palace, the Empan Palace, where we're discussing now Heliopolis. This exactly, place, uh, exactly. Only. So there are so districts. It's for thought and Ayn Sira only, or everything about no. Egypt? Your eyes, when you go up there, will see a lot in Cairo. I won't say Egypt. I'm sorry for that. Mm -hmm. It's each greater Cairo. So you can see, as we I said, see the, pyramids? the pyramids. You can mm -hmm. see uh, Salah al-Din Castle. You can mm -hmm. see uh, Heliopolis. You can see whatever. And then with the screen, you can actually know the history of it, how things were evolved in a, done in a very interactive and interesting way. Sir, uh, as a CEO of uh, the museum, uh, definitely you have in mind plans for enhancing this place uh, maybe in, in a few years. What are these plans? The plan, I would tell you in a nutshell, it's to be number one as a cultural hub in Egypt. We have here, I don't know if you have the chance to see, not only a normal theater, we have a Romanic theater. At its core is a piece of archaeological uh, dying house that goes back to the Fatimist era. And this is beautiful at night, so you can host a lot of events. What we aim for is being number one cultural hub, yet maintaining the quality and maintaining the standards of a respectable place like this. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's our plans. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the museum provides, of course, important centers for the country's youth which is, of course, our main target nowadays because youth is our future Egypt. Um, would you tell us more about the importance of these centers and how youth can benefit from, uh, please, sir? Now, we have um, educational and research. And education among, and training. And, and among... And among, culture. Yes, and among, uh, among the, the, the centers we have, uh, and the people working here, they are definitely a youth kind of, of, of we have a number of, of people in, in, in a very young age who are the workforce of this place. But for the visitors, what we are opening up as well is for people to look at uh, the restoration centers. So the youth will only, will get an idea, and the people in general, of how uh, the artifacts that they see are um, restored. So they, they, they see it at the last stage after putting everything that makes them look in a very good way. But maybe they came in a very bad condition due to climate, due to time, during what, to whatever. So this will be among the learning places for them. As you see here, we have a very huge open place. We aim to have a number of, uh, I would say, uh, in a good sense, uh, some kind of uh, special events for hosting different kinds of arts. So we have a gallery for painting and gallery for uh, photographing where people can display. 
uh, we have those areas that you can have a number of whether it is uh, sport related or art related uh, I would say uh, kind of, uh, of, of of niches where you can use for youth we're intending as I mentioned to collaborate with both universities as well as uh, schools so among the things that we're having in mind, and we already coordinated this, but unfortunately due to the COVID-19, we've, we've been postponing it for a while, is hosting Ilela Kibira with the Ministry of uh, uh, Culture, having the, 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 the real Muppet show of Ilela Kibira, and having uh, kids uh, from different ages as well as different types of schools. Uh, we have the workshops that we organize with the artists in, in the area around us for people here. How to handle glass, how to draw on glass, how to do jewelry, and so on and so forth. Sir, of course, the success of any place depends on the number of visitors. They come um, here on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, and of course, um, on the propaganda of the place. First of all, uh, let us speak about the tickets. Is it reasonable for, the, for an average uh, person and a family to come and visit and uh, who is your target is it foreigners only or Egyptians and foreigners now regarding the tickets I have to assure you that's well taken care of it's very affordable and in the pla in the future what we intend to do is to have some kind of joint tickets a combo ticket where uh, it joins a number of activities together beside visiting then they can do one activity or other. but that's uh, still in the pipeline so they are reasonable uh, just to assure people uh, because of course we're, we're sir, sorry to interrupt you sir but uh, of course the price of the foreigner is going to be different than different the price from of the, the Egyptians. Egyptian. yes Egyptians and Arabs have a price and the foreigners non-arabs have a price Arabs have uh, uh, like the same Egyptians. price of Egyptians yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, and then you ask for who is our main target is it the foreigner or the Egyptian most of the museums have the foreigners and I would tell you this place I believe it's a hub for Egyptians all the non Egyptians are welcome and their point of attraction will be the mummies because it's beautiful but for Egyptians it's more than the mummies it's more of a cultural hub and entertainment so in that sense i would tell you that i expect that our main visitor will be the egyptian mm -hmm. sir of course um, um last ramadan we had of course the series in here or at the end that was of course screened um, and shooted here at uh, this wonderful site and no one knew what, where this uh, series was shooted um, we knew at the end of the day, and we came and we visited and we shooted uh, Nile Cruise. Um, how do you view this, and how far would shooting films or series at the museum promote classical tours? We need to differentiate between two things. Whether we're talking about the lake. You mean Ain Sira? Because it's here, it's beside yes, us, it's out of this, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the huge greenery area that is beautiful and the museum itself. The museum itself has its own um, standard, has its own quality, and we have to respect that. Regarding the shooting, why not having a beautiful place like this? It's a win-win situation. The series is happy to have a unique place, and you have all different types of things outside and outside, and at the same time, we're happy because we'll be uh, gaining money. So it's a win-win situation. And the money yeah. that you take helps in, in, um, in the budget of, of the museum to, to make what? Well, actually, it, it comes in the budget. So yeah. we are, uh, Does we, it help what, to make what, what new things in What I didn't tell you is we, we, by law, we changed in 2020 to being an economic authority. So being an economic authority implies, and there are only two museums that are in economic authorities, we and the Grand Museum implies that I am fully independent in the terms gem. of the gem, yes. The it's going to be an economic it authority? It is, it is already. It is already. It is already, and both of us. you are already an economic And we are already as well. So it implies financial independence. 
If I have to take care, it's very difficult for a museum not to make losses, but at least having the autonomy to handle this from a financial perspective implies that I'm reducing the losses. Okay, so what are the content of the films that are screened in the cinemas and the movies that the, and theaters that you have here in the uh, museum? This was among the things that was negotiated with whoever will take care of, uh, of uh, running the, the cinema, is that the type of movies that he will broadcast have to be keeping the quality and standards. So it might be related to what we have in the museum. So uh, it will be a short documentary about something we have. Or it might be a cultural, educational type of uh, movies that are part of the show. So, I mean, some people have, some of uh, the people who are seeing us have seen uh, uh, the kind of uh, Disneyland and type of movies they broadcast. So it has to be related to the main theme. It doesn't have to be focused on uh, antiquities, but it is cultural related. Okay, so are you going to stick it? Sorry, Dina, if I no, interrupt you. If, uh, are you going to stick it to um, uh, the um, museum or to the cultural events that are related to the museum? Cultural or are you gonna, Or are you going to relate it to the entire country? Um, again, it will be keeping the standards. We will not be showing normal movies. But the details of it are to be uh, addressed with the investor who is going to run such a cinema in order to ensure the quality and at the same time the commercial aspect and the financial aspect to be taken into account. Well, uh, Mr. Before we wrap up, Dina, sorry, I'm very sorry because it's an opportunity. I don't, when I'm gonna, I, I don't know when I'm going to uh, see, see you again, but uh, do you think uh, this place is related to the Ep Ep Epicot Center in, uh, in, uh, in the United States? Well, I don't see it related to anybody. It's unique in the whole world. You might, it resembles a number of places. Yes. But as you said at the no, beginning... No, not related. I, 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 I miss... I, I, I miss, I did not say it right, but I just wanted to say it's like um, the same con concept. It's, uh, you uh, can say uh, it, it's... Because it, the Epcot it, Center... Um, it, it, it builds on the, on the points of strength of different places, whether they are unique in entertainment or unique in uh, museums or unique in culture. And we bring them together and have them here. So they're, they're the same, but More in different less. means. Yes. Here we're in Egypt, and there we're in the United States of America. More or less. <laughs> Any more questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we ran out of time, sir. Mr. But Ahmed. I couldn't leave him without yeah. asking him every single question. <laughs> Mr. Ahmed Ghanim, CEO of the Nemix, thank you very much for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. Uh, of thank course, you. it was Come. a pleasure, sir, to have you with us in today's Pleasure episode, having you, course, too. So thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for your informative knowledge. Thank you so much for your time, sir, and it was a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Dear viewers, uh, this was this segment of um, Nile Cruise in today's episode where we brought you from the Nemec. Stay with us. We'll be back again. Don't go away.